Welcome to Testimonies of God. My name is Laura Zavisky, and this is my co-host, Minister Kim Thomas. And we have two lovely guests today that are going to really share some interesting things in Hebrewic names, every all kind of good stuff. We're going to bug them and ask them everything. And uh, that's Richard and Sharon. Um, let me get that right. Lichtman. Lichtman. Yes. Lichtman. That's good. Lichtman. That's very good. Actually, Lichtman would be yeah. good. That'd Lichtman. Be, you oh, did really? it the right way. Yeah. yeah. Wow, <laughs> praise really? the Lord. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm mm. so glad you could come and be with us. Well, we're happy to be here. Looking forward to seeing it, too. Wow. So, so okay. yeah, um, we're going to start with Sharon first. Um, Sharon, we'd like to sh uh, ask you just to share with us, um, you know, your life, uh, the things that you were doing before you started walking with the Lord. Well, I was raised in a rather dysfunctional home with alcohol being one of the causes for the dysfunction mm. with my father and um, grew up um, without God in the home. And uh, so as a very young girl, though, we had a neighbor who invited me to go to church. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a Baptist pastor. Mm -hmm. And I went to that little church for some time, accepted the Lord there. Mm -hmm. But through my teen years, I got very far removed from God, mm -hmm. which a lot of young people struggle with. Um, so many things to divert our attention mm -hmm. from the things of God and not having that home environment that I could uh, yeah. learn and grow mm -hmm. in. Um, I got far from the Lord. Mm. Um, I ended up having two children, was a single mom at 21, mm -hmm. and on my own mm -hmm. with no job, no nothing. Wow. So I was going through some tough times, but God did see me through. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've learned since is that even when we don't know God's there, He's there. Yes, He is. And yeah. once we've made that commitment to Him, He never leaves us or forsakes us. Mm. And yeah. I experienced that. Um, through difficult times, mm -hmm. not totally understanding it, but looking back, I see God's hand on my life. Mm. So it was a difficult time, but during that time, when I was looking for a job, I went to apply for a job for a waitress. And my now husband mm -hmm. was managing a restaurant. <laughs> so that's how we met. <laughs> okay. oh, that's but at that time, I wasn't really walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believed in God, but I didn't know him in my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And so um, he was my knight in shining armor that came in to rescue me. And, uh, and so we... And God ordered your steps, it seems to me. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and you could say that, but, you know, it, we could tell stories and testimonies for hours. I mean, I'm trying to give you a short version here and cut cut it down because there's so much to tell but um, <clears throat> as a result we, we met and we ended up with he had a, one daughter and I had a son and a daughter and we have two children together mm -hmm. so we have a yours mine and ours now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, God has worked miracles in our life really mm -hmm. in bringing us together and uh, there were rough times in the early days of that relationship but um, God has brought us through some tough times Sure has. And, uh, and we have grown through it mm -hmm. and learned to know God is uh, through the things we suffer. Mm. We go through tough times, but that's, if we never had a tough time, we'd never know that God could solve the problems, right? About right? That. So that's what I have learned. Mm -hmm. I have learned to know God mm -hmm. uh, through the tough times in life. Mm. But I thank Him for every valley and every mountain. Oh, praise God. And uh, absolutely right about he's that. brought us a long mm -hmm. ways. But it was through him. Actually, it was, uh, we weren't walking with the Lord. We had owned a restaurant at that time. We're doing well in the wor world standards. I had dreams fulfilled of mine that I had had as a very young girl. Um, you know, lived in the home that I always wanted, had the family I always wanted. In fact, the home had the circle driveway that I always want, yeah. pictured in my head that I would want mm -hmm, in a home. Mm -hmm. And yet there was an empty spot mm. in my soul. Mm -hmm. And I had found that my husband had clay feet mm. and uh, he couldn't meet all my needs. And so that's mm -hmm. how I finally, after, well, what happened is I tell this story. It took 
the Lord saving this Jewish man to, to get me back to God. So the, it was a miracle and that's part of his testimony of what God did, so. Wow, Anyhow. to God be the glory. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. I've just been rambling on here. So. No, no, no. Are you kidding? This is great. Yes, this is awesome. I mean, it's really interesting. Yeah. You know, and it just goes to show how God have a way of drawing us close he to does. Him. Mm -hmm. he and does. then like you explained, Sharon, that, you know, for those who may have the best home or cars or, you know, mm -hmm. lifestyle, there's mm -hmm. still a void in their that's heart. That's the truth. Only it's, God mm -hmm. Himself mm -hmm. can feel, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah. I have used those words sometimes. I say you can be up and out or down and out. Mm. But if you're out, you're out. Mm -hmm. You know, it yeah. doesn't matter where you're at. Mm -hmm. You can be at the top of the world standards with education, money, mm -hmm. position, you know, whatever you mm -hmm. think is important. Mm. But without God, there's an emptiness mm -hmm. in the hearts and, and lives of people. Mm. And uh, there might be mm -hmm. people that are watching this program that maybe they've achieved all those things yes. and think they have everything they ever wanted and they have an empty spot. Yeah, and you and know. It, and it might be that they're searching for God. Mm. The void. Yeah. The void wow. that they have. And that reminds me of, uh, I, I used to be in the automotive industry and uh, work a lot mm. around a lot of top executives and a lot of them own yachts and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And one gentleman I tried to, you know, share uh, Christ with, he told me he don't need God because, you know, he had his yacht. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, like the Bible say, may you, you, you know, you and yeah. your your yacht perish without <laughs> yeah. Christ. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, I mean, that's and he can't, <laughs> yeah. you know, because yeah. you know, a lot of them want to believe that, <laughs> hey, I've, I've arrived at life, yeah, and this is what I've always mm -hmm, wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but the Bible does say, and, and God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man, that he should have to repent for nothing that he mm -hmm. said. You know, it does say that, you know, in in the end, that every knee will bow and mm -hmm. every tongue will confess that Jesus mm -hmm. Christ is Lord. Amen. So, you know, while you yet have breath in your body, it's best to bow now and acknowledge Jesus Christ is Amen. Lord, or you're going to bow later and you're going to be down in hell wishing you had a bow. That's right. You know, while you yet have breath in your body in the earth. Mm -hmm. So, yes. wow, to God be the Sharon, glory. Sharon, did your dad live long enough to be no. touched by you? No. No. Well, no. Okay. He died when I was four. Oh, okay. mm. So, yeah, there was never that opportunity. I always pray for people, even if they die, and I claim their soul wow. in the name of yes. Jesus, Amen. and I pray for God's mercy, which yeah. endures forever. And Amen. there's, I, I know he does preach mm -hmm. to the dead. There's certain things that you, in the Bible, that's mm -hmm. anything I say, I'll make sure it's in there. Yes. But yes. I do have hope <laughs> for everybody. Yes. yes. Amen. Wow. Yeah. So also, can you just share more with us, Sharon, like um, since, you know, when the Lord brought uh, Richard in your life, like, you know, what is it, the things that, well, let's start with Richard first, and then yeah. we're going to ask what the Lord is doing with you now. So can you share with us, Richard? Yes, uh, we were, uh, you know, by the world standards, we were doing well. Um, we owned a Jewish restaurant in a Jewish mm. neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with the uh, Jewish clientele. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so financially, we were doing well. Um, you know, this came from a, uh, I, I was, I, growing up, you know, uh, uh, there were three of us boys in this Jewish family, and everybody thinks Jews have money. Well, I, you know, <laughs> we never had the money. <laughs> uh, and so we came from a, a poor family, but we really didn't know we were poor. Mm. We didn't, no, you know, we never wanted for food. But I always got the pair of pants after two other brothers wore them. <laughs> 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 That's good. Um, Along the way, we slept in the same bed, three of us in the same bed, not because the house wasn't big enough, but because um, the only had one majority <laughs> of my family um, that went through the concentration camps, oh, those that oh. lived, we brought them over to the United States. Oh, wow. So we were very fortunate, we're blessed, mm -hmm. is that my father came to the United States before the Second World War, before it broke out. Yeah. Uh, he came illegally. So I have a compassion for illegal immigrants. <laughs> uh, if it had not been for my father coming illegally, which he would have been in, put in prison, and he would have been, uh, he wouldn't be alive, wouldn't have not lived through it. Mm. Um, so my father came to the United States illegally. Um, we brought whatever family lived through the concentration camp, we brought them all over from Europe after the war. Mm. So we grew up in that environment, a Jewish home that was 
uh, a traditional Jewish home, um, conservative Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to the, the synagogue on the high holy days and uh, every <laughs> once in a while when we needed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, that was about the, the most of it. But we had that, that inward feeling that we were Jews mm. and, and we knew that. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did was we, we ministered to our own families. Mm -hmm. We touched our own families. When Sharon and I, we were married, we were not saved. Um, we were doing well in our restaurant. And um, I close up the restaurant at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, get home. Uh, I remember Sharon had fallen asleep uh, in the living room. We had a, a colonial at the time. And uh, I had come in, laid down in the living room, turned the television on, uh, and fell asleep on the floor. Uh, then I woke up because I was feeling chilled. And um, I woke up and felt, why am I feeling the way I am? And I went through the, what, our pool room. Our, our, we had, it we wasn't mm -hmm. the dining room, it was a pool table there. Mm -hmm. And I went through the kitchen and then the mud room. And in the mud room, I saw the back door was opened. Um, mm. The glass had been cut. They'd used a glass cutter, removed the glass. Wow. They were professionals and they had, walked through our house and robbed us while we were asleep. Mm. Wow. And um, they had walked past us, I'm sure, and we never, we never woke up. Mm. Praise and, the Lord. Well, at that it? time, yeah. we were having work done in our house. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were remodeling our library and our family room into one room. And my wallpaper hanger said, you guys need a dog. Mm. And uh, he said, I'm going to bring my dog over tomorrow. And so he brought his dog, uh, which was a Bouvier. And Bouvier at that time <laughs> was a new breed to the United States mm -hmm. in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and we said, yeah, that might be a good idea to have a, a, a dog. The police had said that whoever did this, they were professionals. Mm. Um, and that don't take the same way home every night. Uh, change what you do. Um, uh, they kind of knew, you know, they knew we were home when they did what they did. Wow. And so uh, we decided to buy a dog. And the dog that he had came from a place called Frisia's Kennels in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I went to Frisia's Kennels to buy a dog. Mm -hmm. I met the gentleman who ran this farm and raised this dog. His name was Andy Prinson. Andy was a Dutchman, a big Dutchman with a deep voice and a beard. <laughs> and I've always wore Star of David. And Andy saw the Star of David and he said, oh, you Jewish. <laughs> and I said, yes. He said, I love Jewish. Aww, and I said, the Lord. that's good. <laughs> My Lord is Jewish. Jesus is. Aww. And I, as soon as he said Jesus. Andy would have told the story the same way. I took my finger and pointed it almost at his nose and said, don't ever mention his name to me again. So we had purchased a dog at the time. I had purchased the dog. Sharon wasn't there with me. And the dog had to go through training. And so in the midst of this training, I would have to be trained with the dog. Mm. And so I went back to, uh, to Canada every other day, probably twice a week at least, uh, sometimes three times a week. And I would end up at lunchtime on the farm. And on the farm at lunchtime, they would have the young people come in from the fields and they would come in from tending to the dogs that they, they the, it was a kennel in a farm. And they would have, their lunch would be an hour and a half. It would be 15, 20 minutes for lunch and the rest of the time was Bible study. And I would sit in the living room and hear what was going on. And he lived in this little house a lot of people in this house, very tiny house. You could take his house and put it into my family room. <laughs> wow. That's oh how small gosh. it was. Oh my gosh, yeah. And it was something that bothered me about all of that. So when it came time for me to pick the dog up, um, I was thinking about Andy and this house that he lived in, how <laughs> peaceful this man was. There was something he had Mm -hmm. that I wanted, mm -hmm. but Lord. it wasn't Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it was. It wasn't that. I wanted it, but it wasn't <laughs> Jesus Christ. I drove a brand new four-door Thunderbird at that time. Mm -hmm. I had just purchased. Mm -hmm. I had just purchased a diamond ring for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a, a uh, uh, 
the, 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 the price of the stone alone was $15,000 wow. without it being set. Okay? I always wanted something like that. Mm -hmm. I walked around with $1,000 always in my pocket spending money. So I was never deprived. But there was something he had, and I couldn't figure it out. What in the world provoked me to jealousy? Jealousy. Isn't that man. something I was thinking that? And yeah. I was provoked to jealousy. Praise mm. the Lord. As time went on with Andy, we had to take that dog back. It was That's an interesting story, but it's too long to tell of what happened. We purchased another dog. And then it was come a time where Andy turned around one day and invited me to church. And I had no problem going to church. You just didn't mention Jesus to me. Mm. You see, as a Jew, every Wednesday, we used to go to a Baptist church and pick up girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I had no problem going to a, a church. Okay? Yeah. I just had a problem with somebody trying mm -hmm. to bring Jesus into my life. Mm -hmm. Andy, interesting, later on we found out he had what was called Andy's hit list. And he would open his wallet three times a day and take out his hit list. And everybody that was on that hit list, Andy would pray for. Praise wow. God. Isn't that good? On, yes. I was on that <laughs> list. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. I was on that list. That's See, the prayers of a righteous person, Andy Avaleth Princeton, much. availeth much. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. When it came time to pick up the second dog, I have to go back a little bit before the church thing. When it came time to pick up the second dog, I'm headed back into Canada, taking the bridge over. And just as I was passing a cemetery on the way to Frisia's Kennels, a gentleman coming in the other direction fell asleep at the wheel, mm. hit my four-door Thunderbird, and totaled it. Mm. The rear end was like a can opener had taken and uh. just lifted it right up in the air. I fortunately was not hurt, and I got Maybe out of the Lord. car and started laughing. Oh I looked at this brand new car that I didn't really like. <laughs> I was sorry I had bought it. Wow. And here it was totaled, and I was glad. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman that hit me was a black man heading back to the United States. Mm -hmm. So when the RCMP came, we were in Canada, when they came and we sat in their car, and I said to him, Sir, where are you coming from? Because he was heading back to the United States. He says, I'm coming from Frisia's Kennels. I just dropped my dog off. And I said, Sir, where are you going? And I said, I'm heading for Frisia's Kennels. <laughs> I'm going to pick my dog up. Now, Frisia's Kennels was about 30 miles away from where we were wow. on a rural country road, not on a main highway. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think the police believed me, but there's nothing that I did wrong. And he had two people on his hit list. <laughs> the gentleman that hit me. Oh my God, <laughs> hallelujah. And I gotta the say it. Oh my that was gosh. Hit. He was a backslidden Pentecostal preacher. Mm. Whoa. And Praise because God. of that accident, turned his life back over to the Lord. Praise the oh, Lord. Wow. God. So it was after that yes. that Andy invited me to the church. Mm. We're sitting in his church <laughs> in Cottam, Ontario. <laughs> little country church, apostolic church where everybody's got their little buns and no bake up and <laughs> no no jewelry and mm. and uh, we're sitting off to the side about midway and they had a guest guest speaker and this guest speaker was probably at that time the type of person that I would you say on a one to ten disliking he would have been eleven. <laughs> <laughs> he was from down south with a mm -hmm. deep southern accent, came to United Canada to minister, and he ministered walking back and forth, playing a guitar and preaching at the <laughs> same time. Oh, that's funny. That was wow. funny. <laughs> and so as he was preaching, he was preaching on the baptism into the Holy Spirit. Hmm. He gave an altar call for those to come down who wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Come on down to the right-hand side of the altar and I would pray for you. People started coming down and I tapped Andy on the shoulder. I said, excuse me. And he kind of looked at me, probably wondering what was I doing. And I got up and I went to the other side of the altar. There was a woman that came over. She laid her hands on me and started to pray for me. And I took her, gently took her hand off of me. 
And I said, ma'am, I know why I'm here. You don't know why I'm here. Please leave. Mm. She later became my spiritual mama. Oh, <laughs> oh this is so good. Yeah. The reason I was up there is I didn't hear a word the man said. I didn't hear anything about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard God speaking to my spirit saying, Jesus is my son. Wow. God spoke to me and said, not only is Jesus my son, he is the Mashiach you've been waiting for, yes. the Messiah you've been Praise wanting. God. Mm. He is Ooh, that's not only the son of God, he is God mm. himself. Mm. I got up and went down to that altar, and Jews don't know from altars. or yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I just needed to do it. And I knelt down, and all I could say was this, God, now that you've showed me that Jesus is your son, that he is the Mashiach, mm -hmm. and that he is God himself, I know there's something you're expecting from me. Let me know what it is, and whatever it is, I'll do it. Mm. And so that was the time of my conversion, and I then went home and told my wife about what went on, wow. asked if we had a Bible. You can mm -hmm. take it from there. Wow. Yeah, he came home and asked, do we have a Bible? Well, the only Bible I had, which I had had been given to me when my, at the time of my father's passing, mm. my mother had given me as a gift. And it was stored in a box in the basement. I knew where it was, but I hadn't brought it up into the house because I was trying to avoid God. Mm. And um, now God was coming into my house closer. Mm. And uh, I had a lot of questions. I had gone from believing in God as a young child to doubting, to not believing, choosing not to believe. I actually espoused that I was an atheist, mm. that I didn't believe in God anymore. Mm. And um, I was trying to convince other people of that, not with a lot of knowledge, but with my ignorance, you know, of not knowing. C can I just interject sure. here, uh, Sharon? So let me ask you, because you know it's a lot of people, you know, who say that they don't believe in God and God does not exist and they are, you know, claim to be atheists. Mm -hmm. What was it that was going on with you that wanted to deny that there was no God? For me, I believe it was that I had come to the place in my life where I knew I wasn't living the life that God would be pleased with. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing my own thing, doing my own will, and that if I really believed there was a God, then I would have to do something about what I was doing mm. or not doing. And it wasn't that I was doing horrible things, mm -hmm. but I knew I wasn't living right. Mm. I hadn't put God first. I didn't want to put God first. And uh, so I went and got the Bible and uh, gave it to him. And he started going to church reading the Bible, went out and bought his own Bible. Mm. And uh, I had a lot of questions then because now I had to stop and think about what was happening. We had come to a place in our relationship at that time that I, I believe my testimony is that if it hadn't been for God intervening in his and my life, we probably wouldn't be together today. Mm. I don't even know if I would be alive today because in the midst of all that turning away from God, I had become depressed, uh, oppressed, uh, was considering suicide. Mm. Um, I had all these things that I thought I wanted, but I felt that emptiness. Mm. Um, my husband wasn't meeting all my needs. He was in, absorbed in what he was doing in his business and his work and doing his thing. and and we didn't know how to communicate, so <laughs> I was feeling alone. And so now that God had come on the scene, I had to start asking myself the questions, the hard questions, where was I at? Um, where was I with God? You know, are you really real? Well, if you are, then what about this? And I started <laughs> asking God all the questions mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. And one by one, he answered them. Quite often, not because I was reading the Word, he would go to church every week and he would say, do you want to go with me? And I'd go, no, I go. 
Mm. <laughs> I don't want to go. Mm. And so um, just being rebellious and, and, and stubborn, um, self-willed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but at the same time, he'd walk out, and I'd, I'd turn on TV. And at that time, um, 700 Club mm -hmm. was big and new. You mm -hmm. know, kind of new. It was back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started watching it, and there would God would use that quite often to answer questions. I remember him using mm -hmm. that in different areas. Wow. And one day, um, it was like all these questions that I had were answered. And I, I had no, like God's saying, well, what next? Mm. You know, what are you going to do now? Yeah. Sort of like he said, going down to that altar, you know, that point of all of a sudden you know in your heart of hearts that God's asking something of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have any more questions. Mm. And so for two or three days, it was like I could hear, I can't say I heard it audibly. It, it was like in my heart of hearts. She was suffering. I felt you could see it. the pressure of, <laughs> of the yeah. Holy Spirit mm. uh, trying to get me to decide what was I going to do with my life. Mm. And I didn't want to, I said, hey, I'm not a bad person. I, I never <laughs> deliberately hurt anyone. I would never do that. You know, I, I wasn't a, a mean person, a vicious person. I, mm -hmm. I didn't really hurt anybody. Why can't I just do what I want to do? Mm. <laughs> And uh, mm -hmm. about 48 hours of this, I was going without sleep. It was like my mind was wow. um, being tormented. Mm. And uh, all of a sudden, late one night, um, it was like I heard the voice. I was able to distinguish between the voice of God, the voice of Satan, and my own stubborn will. Mm. And I said, and I, when I heard, saw that and heard that, I remember saying out loud, you don't give me a choice. Because my choice is, if I don't choose you, mm -hmm. I am choosing mm. my enemy. Because what I was doing, doing my own will, was choosing what Satan wanted me to do, mm. to be self-willed. Mm -hmm. And I, I was angry. I was ang my immediate response was anger towards God. Mm. That's not fair. You don't even give me a ch my choice is this. I either have to serve <laughs> you or serve Satan. That's what I have to do. Wow. I don't like that <laughs> choice. <laughs> and I got up off my bed and went into the bathroom to take a shower. I thought because I literally felt pressure, mm. weight physically on my body. Mm. I was in pain in my head. I had had a headache for like 24, 48 hours. Wow. I hadn't been able to get rid of, and my brain was not stopping. Mm. It was intense pain. It was a battle, it was a warfare. Wow. And when I got into that shower, something broke. I don't know, it was like, I give up. I just give up. And I stood there in that shower and I said, God, I prayed the prayer of the prodigal son. Might have heard the story in Sunday school when I was a kid, but I can't say I knew it. Mm -hmm. And I prayed pretty much that prayer. God, if you'll let me serve you here, I'd be willing to serve eternity in hell because that's what I deserve. Mm. Wow, that's really. Wow. And I felt the cleansing power oh. of God come over me. Mm. And I came out of that shower, fell across my bed and went to sleep. I woke up in the morning and it was like I had the peace that passes all understanding. Praise God. And I wow. was a new person. Mm. Praise the Lord. My husband was praying for somebody at his place of business, and he called me to tell me about what was going on. And I said, I know everything's going to be all right. He said, what are you saying? I said, I prayed, and the Lord showed me everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. I had prayed for that situation mm -hmm. that day. He said, well, what are you talking about? What's ch What happened? Mm -hmm. And I told him then what Praise mm -hmm. God. And wow, that was a the beginning of a new, a new chapter in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then it was learning and growing mm -hmm. in God what year was individually that? and together. Um, wow. 72, I believe. <coughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, how wow. long have you guys been married? 50 years. 50 <laughs> years. Yeah. Ooh, we praise have, the we Lord. We have five children. Mm -hmm. um, One's gone on to be with the Lord mm -hmm. three years tomorrow mm. wow. at 45. And mm. uh, we have uh, three daughters and a son. 
that we okay. wow. so we've been around for a while I'm yeah. 73 and I married a younger girl she's 72 yeah our birthdays are the you same you robbed the cradle yeah <laughs> same day we were both born on March 23rd and our mm. wedding anniversary is March 23rd wow, wow. That is that's really awesome something. yes yeah. yes wow he always tells everybody we tried to have the children on that day but and it didn't work out <laughs> So. <laughs> oh, wow. what, I, what I need you to do is, is because there's people out there that need to hear this. It's important. I need you to tell that you were having an issue with me. Keep in mind, we were born again. Mm -hmm. and But she's still having an issue with me. A lot of people think when you're born again, all everything turns mm -hmm. rosy, but it doesn't. Okay? Mm -hmm. It takes work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so... She was having a difficult time with me. Tell them the story about what happened. Well, I think that over the years, and I think this is true for a lot of women, we feel that we're the ones that are always giving in and making things right and keeping peace in the house and, you know, taking care of the house. And I call us house managers. We're running <laughs> the house, making all the de you know decisions concerning the mm -hmm. kids and what we're going to do and whatever. But. I had felt that, as I explained, that our relationship was not a healthy one in that we really didn't have good communication skills and we'd both come out of totally different backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and we, just, we just didn't know how to do this thing. So mm -hmm. um, I had gotten very frustrated with the fact that I, I felt he needed to make a lot more changes and give in a little more, mm. you know, in areas. So <laughs> one night I got down on the side of my bed on my knees and I was praying and I was really serious with God. And I began to tell him all the areas that, that he needed to that fix Richard this man. Needed help. Yes. He needed a lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> and I and explained to him. All the person. <laughs> he needed to be straightened up. I yeah. told him, yeah. this, is, this is what he, you know, this is what he needs. This is what I need for you to do mm -hmm. for him. Now, there's people need to listen to this part of mm -hmm. it because this is critical in every believer's life that has a spouse, whether it's mm -hmm. the, the husband or the wife, need to listen to the next few words that Sharon's going to share. Yeah, so anyhow, I, when I got all through crying my heart out, and literally I was crying, I was crying because I was rehearsing all those painful places mm -hmm. in my soul that had been wounded mm -hmm. by what I perceived as his lack of concern or caring or understanding or you know whatever whatever things that were needed and um, when I got all through I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and he just said with the spirit you know just that loving mm -hmm. voice he said and where will you be when I get him all straightened out wow. whoa wow in an instant it was like I was above myself looking down at this pitiful sight kneeling beside the bed and seeing my own state wow. of where I was at and the areas that I needed help. And then I really began to wail and cry. Wow. And I said, God, help me to be changed. Make me into that woman that you want me to be Praise in this Lord. relationship. Change my heart. And um, of course, I got up from there, I, and, and God assured me that he could handle that. Oh, I know. I, the next thing I said was, you know what, God, I don't even know if I love him. And he said, that's all right. I love him enough for both of us. Oh. Wow. And I said, okay, then, here he is. <laughs> 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 and, um, and I got up from there with the peace of God. Hmm. It changed yeah. who I was. Now, there are days when I took back a lot of that <laughs> and tried to rewrite that again. But in the meantime, I've kept and I've seen God work and change mm. the heart of this man mm. to be the man that I need. Well, I, I receive like. that. Yes, you know, I, I, I See, really this do. is a man, the story that we were talking about earlier when we were saying that Andy Princeton came into my life and, and basically prayed us into the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. At that time, um, <coughs> it's hard to believe it today, but I was a person that didn't talk to anybody. Mm. I had over 35 employees. I didn't have to speak to them. All I had to do was look. They knew when they were doing wrong just by the look on my <laughs> face. <laughs> I intimidated everybody that was around me. Wow. Now, they respected me. 
but they were intimidated by me also. Okay? I was a good boss. I treated my employees fairly, but I didn't talk to people. It wasn't until I was born again, and once I was born again, my life changed. And so a while after I was born again, one night I had closed up my restaurant. And this was at a time where people know of Jews for Jesus and mm -hmm. messianic mm -hmm. synagogues. And I didn't know there was another Jew in the entire world that <laughs> believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Mm. I thought I was the only one. Mm. And I was outspoken. Mm. I spoke to my customers. I spoke to my employees. I ministered and didn't know how and why. Mm. And one night after I closed up, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody was gone, locked the door, sat down at a booth. And I said, God, I'm having a problem. And the problem I'm having is this. I don't want to be this freak. I'm the only one. I'm lonely. Mm. And it's not easy doing what I'm doing. Mm. But I have to do it. What I need from you is this an assurance of what I believe I believe. I need to know without any reservation that Jesus is truly the Mashiach, the Son of God, God himself. I believed you, but there's something now that's gnawing at me, and I need this, you to show me in a way that I can understand, not through opening a scripture, mm -hmm. but so that I can understand. Shut the lights in the restaurant, walked out, went home. The next day wasn't a good day for me. I was kind of moody. Second day after that, yeah. you didn't want to be around me. Third day, nobody wanted to be near me. Mm. I didn't speak to anybody, I just looked. They remembered the old Richard. Mm. And so that third night, after we had closed up the restaurant, everybody was gone, I sat down at that same booth, I said, okay. You know, a lot of people think prayer is this, this you no, got to get yeah, on your knees. Yeah. You talk to God. That's yeah. what prayer is, mm -hmm. talking to God. And I said, okay. <laughs> you have to be honest with God. Mm -hmm. He knows what you're thinking. Yes. <laughs> I says, okay, I ask you to show me so that I understand. And you, and I just stopped in the middle of my sentence. And I just welled up with tears. And I said, forgive me. I am so sorry. Oh. All of a sudden without God speaking to me, he spoke to me and said, the last three days you've been what you've been all your life. Do you want to revert back to that? Or do you want to have the liberty and the freedom and the joy that you had? And I said, I'll take the liberty. <laughs> I'll take the freedom. Yes. I'll take the joy. And the circumcised heart. <laughs> that is so that wonderful. Was the, that was, for me, that was the beginning mm. of a, a, a journey. It's been an exciting journey for us. We have ministered together uh, in the inner city of Detroit for several years mm -hmm. uh, with homeless people, prostitutes, drug addicts. Mm. Uh, actually, I had a discipleship class I taught, and my, the majority of my students were crackheads. Wow. I had some prostitutes would stop in every once in a while. Yeah, that's too good. But along the way, that was a, 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 a learning experience mm -hmm. for us. Mm. Uh, I was a teacher. Okay. And uh, um, I... I, I learned from from other people. I learned from my drug addicts. I mm. learned from my prostitutes. I learned from the homeless people that we ministered to. Mm -hmm. From there, we went to Walpole Island. Uh, Sharon oh, yeah. and I were associate pastors of Walpole Island for over three years. Mm. Um, we were associated with Walpole Island, which is a First Nation. Uh, most people say Indian, we say First Nation. We don't call them Indians. Mm -hmm. It's not a proper term for them, really. Mm -hmm. They are First Nation people. Oh. Um, and, well, actually, we, we have an argument going back. I say I'm First Nation. They say <laughs> they're First Nation. And, but we were associate pastors. I was a teaching pastor there uh, for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we moved back. That's in Canada. Walpole Island is uh, mm -hmm. in Canada. And then we came back to the United States, and we're in the... Uh, we, were, we were in several churches along, on, along the way. Mm. Uh, the church that we're in now, we're on another journey. 
uh, we have decided, uh, actually it was the pastor who had, uh, was the one who had asked if we would uh, start a school. And so mm -hmm. we are uh, come be after the after the holiday in September uh, ends when school starts back. We are going to begin a school of ministry, mm. and um, you know, um, along the way is is that in the meetings we've had, uh, for the most part, our pastor said, um, "I want to be a support for you, but you're the one to do this." Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Um, that's okay because that's what I am. My passion is teaching. Mm -hmm. My passion is teaching the body of Christ. Over the years, people have asked, well, why aren't you in a messianic synagogue? Well, you know what? Uh, Paul went to the Gentiles. Yes. I needed to go to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Because of all of us who were messianic Jews went into the messianic synagogue, <laughs> there would be none of us in the church to show that we're not bad people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jews are people to be loved, and you yes, should be praying are. for the peace of yeah. Jerusalem. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's important. Every, you know, because a lot of people's experience with Jewish peoples are not good experiences. Mm. Some work for them, and, 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 and so they, they have a form of anti-Semitism, but they don't even realize why they have it sometimes. Wow. They have an attitude towards Jewish people. And so my... my mm what I'm called to do is to minister to the body of Christ, mm -hmm. basically to grow up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you too, Richard, um, what happened, you know, when you went and did, or did you share with your family that you received Yeshua, uh, Jesus, as your Messiah? That's an interesting story. I'll try to make it brief. Okay. Um, <clears throat> My brother, we always, as, as a Jewish restaurant, we closed up for the Jewish holidays, mm -hmm. pa Pesach, Passover. We closed up for a week during that period of time. <clears throat> and my brother stopped in. I have two older brothers. One of them, Bob, stopped in at my house, at my restaurant, to talk to me about the upcoming Passover we were going to have at his house. Mm -hmm. uh, my father had already passed away, so my father would not officiate as the the mm -hmm. leader of the the. Passover. Mm -hmm. um, my brother's father-in-law had passed away. He would not be the overseer of the Passover. And so it would be at my brother's house. And uh, so Bob stopped in to talk to me, but I was busy at the time. And so he went to the back and was talking to my waitresses. One of my waitresses, who was a Jewish woman, said to my brother, what do you think about your brother since the change? And he said, what change? Mm. And she said, don't you know? <laughs> and he said, know what? <laughs> Your brother is a Jesus freak. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother said, oh. And that was it. And then he came back. And so we started talking about Passover coming. Okay, <clears throat> And uh, I said, I'll see you then. And that was it. He left. It was kind of interesting is during the Passover, Passover is a, I don't know how many of you, if you've ever been at a Passover mm -hmm. meal, but it's ours, not just, <laughs> okay. During the service and the <clears throat> meal, it is ours. Oh. And there's a break. And so Bob, my brother Bob says, do me a favor. He says, come on upstairs, I want to talk to you. I said, here it comes. <laughs> so we'd gone upstairs to talk and he said, I found out that uh, you have something to do with Jesus. Is that true? And I said, yes. I said, do you have a problem with that? And my brother said, no. Oh, wow. Wow. He says, I'm pleased. I'm happy for you. I says, why is that? He says, when I looked at you that day in the restaurant last week, I saw Dad. I have never seen you in all your years smile. Mm. And he was right, I never did smile. The, 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 the child that was born who was called Angel, the smile soon dissipated. And by the time he was 13, Angel died. Mm. Mm. A major dyslexic. People <laughs> thought I was the dummy. Mm. <laughs> and along the way, Angel had died in this bitter, angry, person came out. Mm. 
Mm. My brother never did mm. see me smile. And all of a sudden, he saw this smile on my face, and he said, if this is what it does for you, wow. I'm glad for you. Wow. That was the beginning of my family knowing my pa father had passed away. My mother was alive. Interesting thing about my mother is that she loved Jim Baker <laughs> and the PTL club. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so for the most part, my family accepted the fact that I was born again. They didn't understand it. They thought that I was mentally incapacitated along the way that something had happened, somebody had hypnotized me, mm -hmm. something had happened. But through the years, it's interesting, is that my older brother who passed away not too long ago had high great praise for his youngest brother. Mm -hmm. He thought his younger brother was a phenomenal teacher. Mm -hmm. My brother teaches Bible. My brother is a Bible teacher. Oh, wow. My brother is a person of God. That's interesting. That's a good testimony. Mm -hmm. My other brother who is a teacher in the secular world said that I'm a great teacher, mm. okay? And I said, I get it from, from you. I always wanted to be a teacher because <laughs> of oh, you. Wow. So for that, that's how we ended up, uh, you know, with that our family. That is a wonderful testimony. So you guys still like, you know, it's close relation, although they know that you had. Oh yeah. Okay, that's yeah. praise the Lord, that's a blessing. And I'm quite sure the more that they see the light of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, in you and, and because of the, like they saw the transformation from. There's still ongoing questions every once in a while because mm -hmm. I, I've, I learned a long time ago, if the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you to say it, then shut up. Mm -hmm. Ask the Holy Spirit what you're supposed to be saying to that person. Yes. What should I be doing? Is it something I need to do? Is it something I need to say? Or do I not just need to listen? Mm. Do I need to be a living epistle, read of all men? Do I need to be someone who provokes them to jealousy like Andy Princeton provoked me to jealousy? Mm. Have you written a book? Pardon? Have you written a book? Not yet. <laughs> We're in the process of... of <laughs> <laughs> I really would love to read it because <laughs> yeah. there's well, so much. Well, along the way, there are even... four books up here right now. Mm -hmm. and, and as a teacher, I do a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of interesting. I, we just had a meeting this morning, a pastor and myself, and talking about the the school of ministry. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I entitled I I said, how do, you, how do you feel about this, you know, come and see school of ministry? Yeah. And he said, I think that's great. A lot of people don't realize when two of John's disciples mm -hmm. went to Jesus and said, where do you stay? And he said, come see. Mm -hmm. And wow. in the book of John, you know, I, I, here's a, my teaching moment. I love it. Would you ask the question to people, what would cause two young fishermen to turn around and lead their father's business? Jesus walking the Sea of Galilee says, mm -hmm. come, follow me. What would cause them to do that? Most people would say the Holy Spirit, and I would say you're right, except there's more to the story. You've taken it out of context. Mm. Let's put it into context. Two of his future disciples come to him and say, where do you say? And he says, come see. Mm. He then went to, Andrew went to his brother, Simon Peter. Mm -hmm. We found, found the Mashiach, mm -hmm. and then he came and he saw. There were five of them that walked with Jesus for months, not having to do anything except come and see mm. what this ministry entailed. And then for several months, they went back to fishing. It was then their expectation was that Jesus mm -hmm. would come, the Mashiach, they didn't know he was the Mashiach yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they believed him to be the teacher. Mm -hmm. And the teacher would search out disciples. They knew that he was coming for disciples. He would do what the teachers of that day didn't do. Mm -hmm. The teachers of that day, you had to go to them and say, I want mm -hmm. to be a disciple. Mm -hmm. And you had to have the, 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 the teaching prior to that that would cause them to want to disciple you. Mm -hmm. Halil and Shammai, the two big schools, and then another Shammai, another teacher came on, mm -hmm. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. 
who had shmicha, mm. and he had the anointing, mm -hmm. and he chose his own disciples. Mm. They didn't choose him. And he chose those that the world would have rejected yes. as disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's just like God. Yes. Oh, I yes. just, I love your whole testimony. I wish you guys could come back on and tell more because it is so, it is food. It's meat for people to eat, mm -hmm. you know, spiritual meat, both of you. Really. Well, the Bible says that we overcome by the word of, of the blood of the Lamb and the word the of word our of testimony. testimony. Praise the Lord. That's, yeah. I love and, that scripture. And our testimony is his word that has worked in us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're here to testify to that, mm -hmm. the power that has given us That's overcoming right. power. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for us, it's for anyone who seeks. Yeah. Yes. Because he yes. said, if we will seek, we will find. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. really good testimony. Wow. Really good. Wow. So uh, because the sake of time, can first, Sharon, I'd like for you to look in the camera and pray for those who uh, may be, you know, going through a battle of the things that the Lord has delivered you from. And then after you get through praying, uh, Richard, if you can also uh, look into the camera and pray. Sure. Praise God. Lord, I just uh, come before you with thanksgiving for all that you have yes. done in my heart, in my life, the changes and transformations, oh God. And I share this testimony to encourage mm -hmm. others who might be watching today who have had some of those down times, doubts, fears, unbelief, questions that are unanswered. Father, right now, I just pray that as these ones yield their, their hearts and their minds, yes. that Father, you are able to do super abundantly above what we might ask or think. Lord, you are able to accomplish in their hearts and lives what only you can do and do well. Yes, Lord. So Lord, we just thank you for revelation, truth and knowledge that is being ministered to those who have an ear to hear yes. what it is you would say to them today. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' Thank name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 Richard. I, uh, <clears throat> I would like to talk to those who don't know Jesus as Lord, yes. but I'd like, also like to talk to those that have made a commitment at one time or another. I want to read a scripture okay. uh, regarding that. That of the book of John, it's in the eighth chapter, the 31st verse. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You are my Talmud, my Talmudim. You are my disciples. Mm -hmm. And you shall know the truth, and the truth, shall make you free. This is both to the believer and to the non-believer. Mm. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The opposite of that is true also. Error will put you in bondage. Mm. Yes. Years ago I had some stinking thinking and error put me in bondage. Mm The Lord wants to minister to you who are believers and you who don't know Jesus as Lord. Father, I thank you for this time. I ask you to touch the hearts of those who are listening now. Prick their hearts. Mm -hmm. To that person who had made a commitment at one time and had walked mm -hmm. away. Jesus understands. Yes. He understands why you walked away. Yeah. But he loves you so that he wants to put his arms around you. Yeah. He wants to comfort you. He wants you to feel his love mm -hmm. and his compassion. Father, to the one who does not believe, the one who says there is no God, I'm asking Ra HaKodesh, God's Holy Spirit, to break down the barriers, break down the walls. Mm -hmm. Because yes. yes, you've built up a wall. Mm -hmm. 
you've put up a barrier yes. that only God can tear down for you. Yes. Thank you Allow Lord. him to do that. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, minister to these people yes. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We all agree, Amen. too. That's Amen. a mighty thing. Thank you, thank you so much. I can't yes. tell you how thankful yes, thank I am. Thank you for so much for coming out and uh, sharing with us. Our this pleasure. has truly ministered to my heart, mm. you know, in a lot of ways. Um, God is just so awesome. Amen. Yes. And um, thank you for tuning in, and God bless you. Known, reveal the glory of.